So just in time for spooky season, I have a commander for you guys that I actually bought a few years ago and just never did anything with. So I went ahead and brewed up a nice Halloween spooky season brew with Carador Ghost Chieftain. So what did I do with this that's different than a lot of decks? Well, I made it a spirit deck primarily. My ground rules for this are very simple. I'm going to go ahead and keep everything either a spirit, a nightmare, or a horror. And that's the only creature types that are going to be in the deck just to ooze it with flavor of raising ghosts to haunt our opponents. So let's go ahead and break down the deck and see what I have going on here. Let's first off, let's break down Carador Ghost Chieftain. For five, a white, a black, and a green, you get a 3-4 Centaur Spirit that gets cheap, one cheaper for every card in your graveyard that's a creature, and you can cast creature cards from your graveyard one time per turn. So you can go ahead and get this thing going, reanimate your stuff by just recasting it, or we're going to include some reanimation spells as well. So what are we going to include in this deck? Well, let's start off with the Spirits in there. Let's kick this off with King of the Oathbreakers from the Lord of the Rings set. Now, this is actually going to protect all of our Spirits from removal because every time they get targeted, they will phase out. And then when they phase back in, they're going to bring a little ghostly friend with them to bolster our creature counts. We're also going to include Oyobi who split the heavens. Since we're casting so many spirits and we're able to recast them from the grave using Carador, we can go ahead and get extra little three, three spirit tokens to go along with it using this card, which I had never really seen before. We also have Thief of Hope in the deck. Again, we're casting all these spirits. So every time we cast a spirit spell, we're going to be draining an opponent and gaining life off of it as well. We also have Permeating Mass, which is a green spirit that actually takes care of just about any creature that's not a first striker or a double striker. Because as soon as they block with the creature or they go ahead and run their creature into this, it's going to become a copy of the Permeating Mass. And then we can just recast the mass out of the graveyard and do this all over again. And even though they have their own copy of the mass, then for us to run into most of our stuff is spirits. They fly so we can go over the top of that and not have to worry about it anymore. We also have Willow Geist in the deck. Willow Geist is another mono green spirit that goes really well here because we're casting stuff out of the graveyard. It's going to grow every time we do that. We're also using the reanimation spells and whatnot. And then if it dies, we gain life and then we can just recast it out of the yard and start it all over again. Now, a card that is similar to Willow Geist, but is actually better is Breathless Knight. Now, the Breathless Knight is a 2-2 flyer for three. So it's a Windrake, but it has an ability where it grows every time a creature comes out of your graveyard and hits the battlefield. And it's not restricted like the Willow Geist because the Geist just says one or more. This one is whenever one enters off the graveyard. So it's going to get a plus one, plus one counter and get bigger. And eventually this could turn into a big fat flying threat, especially with a mass reanimation spell, which we'll get into more a little bit later. Now to help support this graveyard filling scheme that we need to have for Carador to keep going and get him down cheaper, we're going to add in some things that mill us and some things that are essentially tutors, which, you know, include things like Buried Alive, which in this deck is like a tutor. You go ahead and get your three best creatures or whatever silver bullet type creature you might need, bury it in your graveyard, and then you can use Carador to cast it right out of the graveyard or to bring back, you know, your three biggest, fattest threats off of a mass reanimation spell. We also have things like Altar of Dementia. It's going to be able to sacrifice our creatures. So if like you're going to block, you're going to die in combat anyways, sacrifice it to the mill or the altar, mill yourself for whatever power that creature was and chalk up your graveyard just a little bit bigger so you can do more things with it. We're also going to have old stick fingers in the deck. Now, this is a one of the non-spirits that are in the deck. It's one of the horrors that's in the deck. And the way he works for us is every mana we pay into that X, we get to mill that many creatures into the graveyard. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, pay five. We get five creatures to fill the graveyard up. That gives us, you know, minus five off of Carador's cost. And it also gives us five power on old stick fingers and makes the deck just run that much smoother. We're also going to include Overlord of the Bailmark from Duskmorn. This one's great because it mills us for four when it comes into the battlefield and when it attacks. And even if you don't want to really attack into something, usually because you're going to lose it, it doesn't matter because then we can just recast it, get another four milled off the top. And then it also brings that card, one of those cards back to your hand as you keep doing this. It's just a really good card in the deck. I'm also going to include a copy of Cemetery Tampering. This one will mill us for three every turn. And once we hit 20 cards, we can get the free hideaway spell off it. So it shouldn't be that hard in this deck to hit that hideaway trigger and get us going off of that as well. And of course, I did say we were going to be using reanimation spells. So let's get into those, including Karmic Guide, which is a great repeatable way of doing it in this deck because we can just cast it for five out of the yard using Carador. We can bring another friend with it. And then it has its own built-in self-sacrifice mode. You just won't pay the 
echo on it and it goes back to the graveyard and you can recast it again and get back your bigger, better creatures out of the yard or some utility you might need. It's just a great all around spell here. And we're also going to include Chthonian Nightmare. Now, this one's a little different in that we don't have a bunch of energy support. I tried to build the deck that way, but it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. But what you can do is most of the creatures in this deck are three or less. So this is going to get back a good chunk of the deck anyways. And if you need to go ahead and get something bigger, what you can do is reanimate like a one or a two drop and just start banking one or two energy at a time over a couple of turns. And eventually you're going to have enough to bring back, you know, your five, your six, your seven drops using this as well. We're also going to include a copy of Coiling Rebirth. This is great if you have an ETB that you want to double up on or you just want a big threat that you want to double up on because you can make a copy of it by gifting a card to your opponent and getting a token copy of it off of the Coiling Rebirth. We're also going to go ahead and include some big fat mass reanimation spells in the deck, as I mentioned earlier such as Eerie Ultimatum. Since we're in the Abzan colors, this is perfect in this deck. It goes ahead and gets all of our stuff back, including non-land permanents. So it's not just the creatures. It's just all non-land permanents. You can just go ahead and whip them right back on the board. So as we're milling our enchantments and all that stuff that get kicked into the yard, we can go ahead and bring those back as well. We also have Living Death in the deck, which is great because you can use it in a couple of different ways. One, you can, you know, nuke the board and get rid of stuff that's threatening you and trade it out for stuff that's not as threatening in the graveyards or you know you get your stuff buried in the deck milled in whatever and then you just trade off your weaker stuff that's on the battlefield for the bigger better stuff and then we also have last but not least storm of souls now i just felt this was a good flavor win in the deck because you're turning all your stuff in the graveyard into ghosts now most of the stuff in the deck are ghosts technically because they're all spirits but I thought it was still a good flavor win and a good way to get another mass reanimation spell in here without delving into, you know, bigger, more expensive spells. So what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, let, go ahead and like, share, comment, subscribe. All of those things help the channel grow. And as always, thank you for watching. Happy Halloween. And I will see you in the next video.